Hi guys, and welcome back to the Bonsan YouTube channel. I'm Josh, and today we're going to be talking about a clear roadmap to creating proper bonsai. So stick around. Alright, so when starting off in bonsai, there isn't this real clear instruction on what you should be doing or how you should be doing it and everybody kind of just learns little bits here and there they take information but there's no real way to determine what what order you should do things in with your tree or what to do with it for that matter so what we're going to be going over today is a clear roadmap which shows you the steps that need to be taken to create a proper bonsai and now when I talk about a proper bonsai, I'm talking about something that you want to put in an exhibition or something that you want to, you know, be able to take to shows, maybe competitions, that kind of thing. There's a lot of different levels of bonsai out there. And I think I kind of need to start this off by saying that if you're somebody who just wants to enjoy bonsai and you know, have a few little trees, then you don't necessarily have to follow this. This is going to get you the best result. But in saying that, there are lots of different levels out there. There are people that just like to have little trees, look after them and be done with that. But then there's those other people who want to take bonsai to the next level, take it a bit more seriously, get those bigger, better trees, get them more refined, get all the flaws out of them, and that's what following this is gonna do. So, we're gonna go over all the different points here, and I will point out before I start, what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna briefly go over these points, because if we deep dive into every single one of these points, I mean, there's a video on its own for each one of these points. But what I'm gonna do, is we're gonna talk a little bit about each of these points and we're gonna talk about why we do these things in this order and what the benefits are. And then what I'm gonna do is over on our website, www.bonsai-en.com, what I'm gonna do is on there, we've got a blog and I'm gonna take each one of these points and I'm gonna write a big write up on it. So you can go there and you can read in depth if you wanna continue on with this lesson. Because as I said, otherwise we're gonna end up with like a three hour video here. <clears throat> so I'll leave the link to that uh, in the description below so you don't have to remember the website. But it is a paid service over there. It's only $4.99 a month, but there is a free seven day trial. So if you wanna read this, go and sign up for the free seven day trial and check it out. While you're there, check out some of the previous posts because there's some really helpful stuff there. But anyway, let's jump into it and talk about our first point. Okay, so our first point here, well, our first subject actually, so we've got our subjects and then we've got our points underneath it. So our first subject here is development. And this is super, super important. And this is the main reason why people don't have really, really nice trees is because they completely skip this step. And it's funny because most people go, they skip this step and they go straight down to this last step down the bottom here, which is branch refinement. And it, it just, it doesn't work. What you'll end up with is just a little stick in a pot and it's not gonna develop and it's not gonna become a really nice bonsai. So when we talk about development, the first step of development is growing the tree. It's pretty basic. And when we talk about growing a bonsai, we've got two main ways that this is done. And this is slip potting and ground growing. Now, you can choose which one of those two you wanna do. When I do the article up, it'll be available at the same time as this video, you'll be able to go and read about ground growing and you'll be able to go and read about slip potting and you can work out for yourself what you wanna do. But the reason why we do these two is because this allows the tree to grow. So say if you went and bought a starter tree that was only as thick as this uh, marker here, you're not gonna wanna turn that into a bonsai. You're gonna want you know, to turn it into something nice and thick and you know, something impressive. Now, I mean, you don't have to go that big with all trees. You can you know, create something that's only this round. 
But the point is you need to grow it on from this. So that's where slip potting and ground growing comes in. This will allow you to get the thickness and the girth in your tree, no matter which one you do. As I said in the article, you'll be able to read about you know, what the benefits are of both. But when we're slip potting and ground growing, the other really important thing is, is heavy feeding, heavy fertilization, okay? So heavy nitrogen. And what this is gonna do is this is gonna give us lots of elongation. More elongation means more leaves, more needles, depending on the species. And the more needles and the more leaves means the more photosynthesis that's happening. And the more photosynthesis that's happening, the more growing that's happening. So if we can feed the tree really, really heavy with something that's really heavy in nitrogen, then we're gonna get that thickness in the tree that, you know, that we're after in the development process. So whether we're slip potting or we're ground growing, we need to be heavy feeding, okay? Now, the goal of all this in development is we're trying to build a root base, so our nabari. We're trying to create a trunk line we're trying to get trunk thickness, and we're trying to get our first branch. Now, this first part of the tree is called the Tashiagari, okay? And the reason that we're trying to build this in development and the reason it's so important is because that's the one part of the tree that you cannot fix, okay? So you buy a tree, a pre-developed tree, and that Tashiagari is no good. The, you know, the root flare and the, the movement, the first movement in the trunk, um, you know, your first branch and everything. These are really, really hard things to fix in a tree if you don't like them. So in this development stage, it's really important that, you, you know, you're working on your roots. You're laying them out, okay? You're getting that nice root flare. So as those roots thicken, they set and you've got a nice base. Your trunk line. When you've got a big thick trunk, you can't just put wire around it and bend it. So it's important while that tree is young and pliable, you put the wire around, you put some dramatic bends in it and let it grow out because those dramatic bends are gonna straighten out as the tree gets thicker. Those lines are become, gonna become a lot softer, okay? So that's why we gotta work on our trunk line during development because if the tree gets too thick, you've lost your opportunity to make a good trunk line. And then obviously after that, you've got your trunk thickness. So once we've started working on our root base and we've got our movement in our trunk, then we can start working, working on thickening up that trunk and getting the girth. And then at the end of our development phase, we can work on our first branch and thickening up our first branch. So we've got a little bit of a head start there when we start developing all our branches out, okay? So that's kind of our goal, our main goal in the development process. So say you've got, you know, you've got your little tree that you're developing out and say, um, say this is your nursery pot here, okay? And now um, you've got a nice thick trunk grown up here, right? You've got some movement in it. You've got your first branch there. All this stuff that's going to be happening up here, so you're going to, probably going to have branches here and branches here, 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 and everywhere. And then you're probably going to have, you know, this big ball of apex up here somewhere. And, you know, this is essentially going to be full of, you know, little branches and stuff all through that. All this stuff up here, I wouldn't necessarily waste your time working on it because nine times out of 10, when we reach the end of our development stage, remember what I said before. This part of the tree here, your Tashiagari, most important, that's what we're trying to build. We're trying to build that root flare out on the bottom of the tree. We're trying to build the movement, our first movement in the trunk, where it's gonna thicken up the most. We're trying to, you know, get our trunk thickness here, down the bottom. And then at the end of it, we're trying to get our first branch here. And then, once we're, 
nearing the end of our development cycle, we're going to come and cut all this stuff off. And essentially, what we're going to be left with is that bottom part of the tree that we've been working really hard to develop on. So now that we've gotten rid of all that, now we're left with our Tashiagari. And I'd like to point out too that um, keep in mind that not all species can be completely trunk chopped, okay? And what I mean by that is if you got, you got to research your species. But for example, pines and junipers. If you're going to cut here, you need to make sure you've got foliage behind the cut on this side of the cut. If all your foliage was up here and you've got none on this section of the tree and you cut it, you've essentially got a dead tree, okay? Some trees can be cut, no worries, with no foliage below the cut. They'll shoot buds everywhere, okay? And the, the usual indicator of this is, um, you know, like junipers. They store all their energy in their, their needles. So if you cut every single one of them off, the tree's just lost all its energy in one hit. So make sure that you do your research on your species that you're working on and make sure that you understand that if you do a trunk chop on it, whether it has to have foliage behind the cut or not. But anyway, back to where we were. So now what we're gonna do is now that we've built up our goal that we've got here and we, we do our cut, we might get some new leaders that take off here and we can you know, start wiring these out. And as that gets thicker, you will actually create taper in the tree. So you go from thick and then you can see you know, how that would make it go to thinner. And then obviously that's bad drawing on my part, but as it gets closer to the top, it really should get thinner and thinner as you get towards the top. And that's how we create our taper. And you can only do that in the development process. So if you, if you skip this process, then your tree is gonna be lacking taper. All right, so now that we've had a quick chat about that, we're gonna talk about the next very important step of the development process. So once we've, once we've gone through and we've done all that, our next goal is to build strength, okay? We wanna get that tree nice and strong and healthy because we know that we don't wanna work on a tree that's weak <clears throat> because you're just gonna make it even weaker by working on it. So we want to build strength in the tree after we've done this work on it. And then once it's strong, we can create our initial movement or do our initial design on the tree, which is basically just setting the structure, uh, setting the branch structure on the tree and doing a basic styling, okay? And then what you will have after doing all that in the development process is you'll have the basic bones of a tree, of a good bonsai. So you'll have a nice thick trunk with moving, movement in it. You'll have a nice first branch. You'll have some nice branching above that. It'll be all wired out. And I'm only talking about the first branching here. We're not talking about secondaries or tertiaries. They come later on. But we've got the basic structure of the tree and it's gonna be nice. You're gonna have your taper. You're gonna have your movement. You're gonna have your thickness. You're gonna have your first branch. That's all done here before we move on to our next um, subject, which is refinement. So let's jump into that. All right, so now we're gonna talk about our next subject, refinement. So now that we've got the basic bones and structure set in our tree, we need to go about refining that tree and doing all the fine little details. Now, one of the first things that we've got to do is we've actually got to find a bonsai pot that suits our tree. We've got to look at our tree, look at the characteristics and work out whether we need a masculine pot or a feminine pot. You know, if it's a tall slender tree, we might need a round pot. Um, deciduous, you might need a glazed pot. If it's conifer, might need an unglazed pot. 
We do have an article on our blog. So if you're gonna click that link and get your free seven day, seven day trial, go and check out our post on how to choose a bonsai plot because that's gonna be really important because now's the time to choose that bonsai pot because you don't want to be swapping that bonsai pot out all the time. You want to find the right pot for that tree. You don't want to, you don't want to do all this work just to put the tree in the wrong pot. Okay? And then once we've chose our bonsai pot, we need to work out the correct soil mix. Okay? Now, the soil mix in refinement is completely different to the soil mix in development. And there's other videos on our YouTube channel you can go and check out if you haven't seen them. But getting the correct soil mix in refinement is so, so important. I've seen people that dismiss this and they say that they just use regular garden soil. And that is just, that's completely wrong. And as I said, this is where the, this is where the different levels of bonsai come in. Somebody who just wants trees to muck around with and look at and kind of tinker with, Garden soil, fine. But if you're wanting top level show trees, you need to get the correct inorganic materials for your bonsai pot. Akadama, pumice, lava rock, scoria, zeolite, perlite, all those kinds of things. Um, Kiryu, you name it, kanuma, those kinds of things. You need to do research on your species. You need to work out what moisture retention you need how, how, much the, how much drainage you're gonna need for that particular tree. You also need to work out what your environment is, how hot it gets, how cold it gets, how much wind you have, how often you're home to water, all those kind of things. And this is gonna tell you what kind of soil mix you're gonna need for that tree, okay? It's very important. That mix is where your tree lives. And without a stable home, you're not gonna have a very nice tree. So make sure you put a lot of thought in to creating your soil mix. So the next thing after that, we're gonna be transferring from our growing pot into our bonsai pot, okay? And this is a very pivotal time for the tree because it's going from one soil mix to a completely new one and it's going from a big nursery pot into a small bonsai container. So there's a few things you gotta look out for here. Make sure you're doing this at the right time. You don't wanna be doing this work at the wrong time, okay? Make sure that your bonsai pot, once again, is the correct pot. Make sure it's deep enough. Depending on your species, you may need a deep bonsai pot. You may only need a shallow bonsai pot. You need to, you need to make sure you do your research on this, okay? And then after we go into our bonsai pot, then there's a period of aftercare, okay? So there's a period of aftercare, which I'll go into in much further detail in the article, but we've got to look after the tree because now we've probably got a, a whole season ahead of us now. Now that we've gone into the bonsai pot, we've got to let that tree settle. We've got to let it grow into the bonsai pot because at the point of potting the tree up, you're most likely going to put the tree in an energy negative state. And this is not a point where you want to be you know, trimming it real hard and you know, really bending on it and putting it under a lot of stress. You want to get it into that pot, make sure it settles in, grows its new roots, gets its you know, water system all you know, back and moving and it's transpiring properly and moving nutrients, moving water and all systems ago before we start working on that tree, okay? So aftercare is absolutely vital. And then also, before we start our last part of refinement, we need to adjust our feeding because we don't want to be doing this heavy feeding that we're doing in development in refinement. Because when we were in development, we wanted these really long inner nodes and we wanted these you know, big sets of leaves and just so we could get as much energy as we could into that tree. But now that we're moved into refinement, we want really small leaves, we want really small inner nodes, we want that real small growth. So we need to adjust our feeding so we can get that growth. You know, one part of getting that small growth in refinement is the correct soil. But the next part of that is to adjust your feeding. And if you're not doing these things in tandem, you're gonna get mixed results. So 
When I do up this article, I'll go a little bit further into what kind of feeding we should be doing in refinement versus development, and we'll go from there. And then the last thing on this roadmap is branch refinement, okay? So this is when we're working on growing the, you know, the smaller growth, and we're going from one branch to two branch to four branches to eight branches, and so on and so on. So this is the very last stage of the game and this is usually where people want to jump straight to and I'm hoping from this video that you can see that every single one of these things kind of it needs to be done in the correct order to get those big beautiful trees okay so as I said if you go and buy a stick Basically, that's tube stock or just, you know, a $10, $12 tree, whatever it might be from your local garden store. If you come home and you put this into a bonsai pot, the roots are going to fill out this bonsai pot and you may get a branch here and you might get a branch here and you might get a branch here. And then what are you going to do? You're going to wire this branch up and you're going to wire this branch up and wire this branch up. But that's all you're going to end up with ultimately. It's just, it's going to stay like that. It's going to look like that. Whereas if we take this tree, just to give you a quick diagram, we bring it home in the nursery pot, okay? We've got our little tree like that. The roots begin to fill up this pot, okay? We slip pot it up into a bigger pot. We allow the roots to grow some more. Thus, the, the tree grows some more, right? All the roots fill out this pot. We slip pot it up again. The roots can grow even more now. They can grow bigger and thicker. Thus, the tree starts to grow bigger and thicker. And, I mean, you see the method here, you know, and then we go into a bigger pot. Roots can grow some more and more and more and more and more. And then you start getting a bigger tree. And then obviously, you know, I'm only drawing this to here, but the whole time that this tree is growing, it's essentially, if we do another drawing here, essentially, say this is zoomed out, and we've got our tree, you know, it's, it's grown really big and tall. You know, it's got branches coming off it everywhere. It's got growth, it's healthy. And then as I said, that's later on when we come back and we do our cut down. And then we start, you know, developing the tree on. We've done our cut here. We've got our new leader and we start growing up there we get our taper and then we can start, you know, building our tree. <clears throat> then we might build our apex like that. And then eventually we take it out of the nursery pot and put it in our bonsai container and we get a much nicer tree. I know my drawings are terrible, but <laughs> you'll just have to bear with me. So, I'm hoping that was clear for you guys, the roadmap that we kind of need to follow. As I said, I'm going to go through, I'm going to do that article for you guys, and I'm going to write, for every one of these points, I'm going to write a more in-depth, let's just say, guide to what you should be doing in terms of slip potting versus ground growing, what heavy feeding means for development, I'll do a little bit on kind of what we want to look for in a root base, what we want to look for in a trunk line, what we want to look for in trunk thickness, first branch, all that kind of stuff. I'll talk about building strength, creating initial movement, and so on and so forth. So, as I said, link down in the description. Go and sign up for the seven-day free trial and check out all the other articles that we do have there. But most importantly, check out everything that goes along with this video leave a comment down below let me know if this was clear if this makes sense 
whether you've been doing something similar to this, whether you've missed some steps, let me know, okay? Um, I always love you guys' feedback. I love hearing that, you know, maybe you've been able to change the way that you're growing your trees now and that you're on a, a clearer and more refined path towards making bigger and better bonsai. As always, I'm Josh here at Bonsai N. You can get Bonsai N merchandise over at www.bonsainmerch.com. Once again, head over to our website, link in the description below. Go and check out that premium blog, sign up for the seven day free trial, and I'll see you over there. Until next time, enjoy your bonsai journey.